Hello, my name is Ben. And I'm Jan. In our previous video, we showed how to assign IP addresses and system names, including changing the default password of the access points. Now, we will show you how to extend the Scaland access point configuration. For this purpose, I have installed the network management system, Cynic NMS, as control and operation and changed the default log on credentials. For this process, you can download the step-by-step -step guide Getting Started with Cynic NMS free of charge from our service and support pages. As a first step, I navigate in the Cynic NMS control to System Administration Operations and create the scan range 192.168.0.1 to 192.168.0.2 which is suitable for our example. I then synchronize the Cynic NMS operation with the new discovery settings and start the network scan. I can find the resulting inventory list of all known network devices on the Network Monitoring Devices tab. In the second step, I would like to only configure the access points using the Cynic NMS policies. So I create so-called device areas in the system administration. In our example, that's wireless LAN APs and wireless LAN clients, which we will use later to optimize the roaming. To do this, I create the new child device area wireless LAN APs select a suitable operation and add the device condition device category equals access point. In the same way, I create the second device area wireless LAN clients with a device condition, device category equals WLAN client. I now configure all access points with so-called Cynic NMS policies. To be able to understand and maybe modify the configuration of the access points at a later phase, the Cynic NMS policy comprises of one or more rules that contain the tasks which will be enforced on the devices. In the area Network Administration Policy Control Center, I create the first policy and call it 01-AP Wireless LAN Initialization and then restrict it to the access points to be configured. To do so, I use Wireless LAN APs device area I created in the previous step. I now add to our policy a new rule named Basic Wireless LAN Parameters and assign to it the predefined task setWLAN AP Client Country Code and set the country code to Germany. In the second and third task setWLAN AP Client Antennas, I configure our omnidirectional antenna ANT 795-4MA as antenna A1 or A2 on radio 1. In our example, the second radio interface is not required. To complete the basic wireless LAN initialization, I add a further rule named layer 1 to our first policy. With another predefined task, setWLAN AP Basic, I now configure the transmission standard and the transmission power. In our example, I set the frequency band parameter to 5 GHz. WLAN mode 5 GHz to 802.11n and the maximum transmit power to 10 dBm.
Great, we made it. We have now successfully created our first Cinec NMS wireless LAN policy with two rules and a total of six tasks. Structuring the policy in this way ensures the underlying wireless LAN configuration is easier to read and understandable in case of future modifications. Next, we create a second policy for configuring the SSID and wireless LAN security parameters, again in a similar way to the previous procedure. First, I define the policy, which I named 02-DP wireless LAN parameters, and restrict this to the device area wireless LAN APs. After I have created the rule layer 2, I add the task setWLAN AP basic and set the SSID for WLAN 1 to demo and activate the virtual AP VAP1 with VAP radio.1 enabled. With the second task, set WLAN AP Security Basic, I configure the authentication type for VAP1 of WLAN1 as WPA2 pre-shared key and use a sufficiently secure password. Finally, with the third and last policy, we set suitable wireless LAN channels and activate the first radio interface, radio R1. To prevent the wireless LAN channels from overlapping, we use the system name assigned in a previous step for the unique identification of the two access points. Then, I create our third policy named 03-AP wireless LAN channels using the device area wireless LAN APs and adding the first rule, channel 36. This time, I additionally restrict the rule by adding a new condition in the device conditions field. This filters out those access points that contain a 01 at any position in the system name. I achieve this by setting the field's system name contains to 01 and then add the task set WLAN AP basic and set the 5 GHz channel 36 on radio WLAN 1. I now repeat the same procedure for all access points that contain a 02 in the system name and configure their 5 GHz channel to 40. For this, I create the rule channel 40 and restrict it in the device conditions field by setting the field's system name contains to 02. After this, I set the 5 GHz channel to 40 in the set WLAN AP basic task on radio WLAN 1. Finally, I enable the radio interface Radio R1 for all APs. To do this, I create the rule Enable Radio without restricting it further. Next, I add the task Set WLAN AP Client Enable and set the Radio Enable field to Yes for Radio R1. We have now completed the wireless LAN configuration with the help of three Cinec NMS policies. Before I let our access points to be configured by the Cinec NMS policies in the final step, I would like to simulate the policies in advance. In this way, I can find out before the actual configuration which parameters would be written to the APs in which order whether I have set the device conditions correctly and whether the required APs even have the ability to be configured by Cinec NMS. For this purpose, I select all three policies, click the Deploy and Activate button, wait until the policies have been transferred from the control to the respective operation, and then click Simulate in the Actions menu. 
In the last simulation column, I check the simulation report. Have the required APs been identified? Have the device areas and the additional device conditions for the wireless LAN channels been correctly set? And does Cinec NMS have the correct credentials to write all parameters to the APs via SNMP? After checking the simulation report successfully, I enforce one policy after the other on our access points. To do this, I select the first policy, 01-AP Wireless LAN Initialization, and click the Enforce button. I repeat this procedure for the second and third policy, 02-AP Wireless LAN Parameters and 03-AP Wireless LAN Channels. During enforcement, you can track in the column Last Enforcement State the progress in percentage. After the configuration is done, meaning the policy status changes either to success or failed, I display the additional field Last Enforcement, so I can view the detailed enforcement report. I check again whether all three policies have been successfully applied to the two APs, parameter by parameter. And that's it. Awesome! This completes the mass configuration of the access points with our Cynic and MS policies. And now the pre-configured wireless landlines can connect to the APs. In our next video, we will show you how to check the wireless LAN communication and refine the wireless LAN client parameters.